Well, we certainly bless the Lord for another Lord's Day morning that he has blessed us to see. How many of you are excited to be of the house of the Lord this morning? Hallelujah, hallelujah. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I'm going to start with a scripture. Psalm 29 verses 1 through 5. Give unto the Lord, O ye mighty. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thundereth. The Lord is upon many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaketh the cedars. Yea, the Lord breaketh the cedars of Lebanon. He maketh them also to skip like a calf. Lebanon is Syrian like a young unicorn. The voice of the Lord divided the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shaketh the wilderness. The Lord shaketh the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord maketh the hinds to calve and discovereth the forest. And in his temple doth everyone speak of his glory. The Lord sitteth upon the flood. Yea, the Lord sitteth king forever. The Lord will give strength unto his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. I was going to read verses 1 through 5, but that thing, it got good to me. So I read in your hearing Psalm 29 verses 1 through 11. The Lord will give strength unto his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. The peace of God that surpasseth all understanding. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I'm so excited to be in the house of the Lord this morning. And I'm going to tell you why. Because last Sunday, I was so downtrodden. And I, I did not feel like coming in here. Because I had a lot of things that was going on mentally, spiritually, and physically. But I thank God that he has given me the strength I thank God that he has blessed me to endure a week. And I don't know about you, but it's amazing how I can get one more time and one more opportunity to come into his presence. Because life can throw so many curves at us. Life can give us so much hell at times. But if you can just reach heaven, no matter how much hell you go through, if you can just reach heaven, if you can just reach God, I guarantee you he'll change your situation around. There's a simple song that says, I will bless thee, O Lord. I will bless thee, O Lord. With the heart of thanksgiving, Oh, I, I will bless thee, O oh Lord. Oh, 
anything. If you got a heart of thanksgiving, I dare you to begin to bless the name of the Lord. I guarantee you that every situation in your life will change if you just begin to bless the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God, we come to bless your name. God, we come to give you the glory. God, we come to give you the praise. And God, I thank you for another day, God. God, I thank you for another opportunity, oh God, that I get to bless your name, that I get to give you the glory because you're the God of peace. You're the God of strength. And God, I come right now to tell you thank you. Thank you for loving me, God. Thank you for keeping me, oh God. Thank you, oh God, for your grace. Thank you, oh God, for your mercy. Thank you, oh God, that it's new every morning. God, I thank you because I don't know where I will be without you. God, I thank you because I don't know. God, hey, hey, come to the Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. God, I thank you. God, I thank you. God, I thank you because it could have been another way, God. God, I thank you because it could have been another way, God. But, oh, but I thank you, oh, God. God, I thank you, oh, God. God, I thank you, oh, God, that it is well as it is. God, I thank you, oh, God. God, I thank you, oh, God, that when I was weak in my body, God, you gave me strength. God, I thank you, oh, God, that when I was in a depressed state, oh, God, you lifted me up. And God, I thank you. God, I thank you. Oh, 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 God, I thank you. God, I thank you. I hear God say, I'm lifting the heavy burdens. I hear God say, I'm lifting the heavy burdens. I don't know who in here is heavy right now, but I hear God say, I'm lifting the heavy burdens. I'm lifting it, I'm lifting it, I'm lifting it. Whoa, I feel it down in the pits of my belly. Oh, 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 he said, I'm lifting your heavy burden right now in the mighty name of Jesus. God said, give it to me. God said, give it to me. God said, God, oh, God said, stop holding it. God said, stop holding it. God said, stop carrying it. I don't know who's carrying something this morning, but your spirit is heavy. I dare you, I, oh, 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 I dare you to release it. I dare you to release it. I dare you to release it right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I dare you to give it, oh, I dare you to give it over to God. I dare you to give it over to God right now. Whatever it is that you're dealing with, whatever it is that you're struggling with, I dare you to let it go. 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 Oh, who am I talking to this morning? I dare you to let it go. I dare you to let it go right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, 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 devil, you be loose right now. Out of the, oh, devil, you got to go. 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 I cut the love on she cut the love on oh, your power won't work in here because the power of the Holy Ghost. Loose the shackles right now. Loose the shackles right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, God said, I'm setting you free. God said, I'm setting you free. God said, I'm setting you free. No longer bound. No more chains gonna hold you. It won't hold you in this season. God said, I'm now. You let it go. God said, and I'ma let it go. In the mighty name of Jesus, I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but I guarantee all. I guarantee you that the Lord said, the Lord said, the Lord said that this going that this season is gonna be problem free. Oh, I don't know who that's for, but you've been dealing with problem after problem. You've been dealing with issue after issue. You've been dealing with situation after situation. Oh, 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 oh. Be loose from your infirmity right now in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. I, oh, I dare everybody in here under the sound of my voice that believe God for a miracle. I dare you to just shout. I dare you to open up your mouth and just shout. I believe God for it. Oh, I believe God for it. I dare you to shout, I believe God for it. Oh, oh, I believe God for it. Oh, I believe God for it. Oh, I believe God for it. Woo! I believe God for it. Woo! I believe God for it. I believe God is gonna turn it around. I believe God is gonna turn it around. I believe God is gonna turn it around. He's gonna turn it around in your favor. He's gonna turn it around in your favor. What the enemy meant for evil. That I'ma turn it around. I'ma turn it around for your good. I'ma turn it around for your good. I'm gonna turn it around for your good. I'm gonna turn it around for your good. I'ma turn it around for your good. For your good. 
good, for your good, for your good, for your good. He's working in your favor. 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 I don't know who this is for, but I feel it in my soul that he's working in your favor. I dare you to offer up to him the sacrifice of praise. Woo! I dare you. If you need, oh, oh, if you need it to be turned around in your favor, I dare you to open up your mouth. Woo! I dare you to lift up your hands. I dare you to shout because it's already done. I dare you to shout because it's already done. It's already getting better. I heard the Lord say, it's already getting better. Woo! I don't know who this is for. Oh, my God, my God, my God, my God, my God, my God, because he's turning it around. Woo! He's turning it around. Woo! He's turning it around. Woo! And it's turning around for me. Woo! And it's turning around for you. I get somebody to reach up towards heaven and say, it's turning around for me, for me, for me. And God, we give you the glory. God, we give you the glory. God, we give you the glory. Be your glory fills the temple. Your glory fills the temple. Where two or three are gathered. Where two or three are gathered. In my name, I'ma be in the midst. We ain't got to have a whole church full of folk for God to fill this place with his glory. We don't have to have a church full of folk for you to tap into the glory of God. Whatever it is that you need, I dare you to jump up and get it. Whatever it is that you need, I dare you to jump up and get it. God said you're about to pass the test. God said you're about to pass the test. He said you're about to pass the test. He said you're going to pass. You gon' pass it. He said you gon' pass it. Oh, woo! Hot the little lobo, shake the little lobo, shake. He can the little lobo, shake the little lobo. Oh, he shook the little lobo, shake the little lobo. Oh, I can the little lobo, shake the little lobo, shake. I need your back, shot. He can the little lobo, shake the little lobo. Oh, I can the little lobo, shake the little lobo, shake the little lobo. I'm back at the little lobo, shake the little lobo. Show. I'm back at the little lobo, shake the little lobo, shake. I can the little lobo, shake the little lobo. I'm back at the little lobo, shake the little lobo, shake. I can the little lobo, shake the little lobo. Mother Purdle, Mother Purdle, Mother Purdle, Mother Purdle. God said, I see you crying. God said, I see you trying to hold on to it. But God said, this very moment, you got to let that thing go. Mother Purdle, I hear God say that this test and this trial is only coming because your next level, your next season is about to blow your mind. But God said, I'm trying to talk to you. God said, I'm trying to talk to you. He said, but you got to let that thing go. He said, you got to let it go. He said, you got to lift the heavy burden. Oh, I didn't get up here to do none of this. Oh, cut the level, shake, cut the level, oh. But God said, God said, you got to let, oh. God said, you got to lift it. God said, I'm going to lift it. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And it is so. Woo! Come on and praise them. Woo! Come on, come on. You believe it's done. Woo! See, I believe God is about to do the miraculous. Woo! It's some things that we've been praying for. It's some things that we've been seeking. And God said, I'm here to answer every prayer. Every petition that's gone up to me. He said, don't think I've forgotten about it. He said, because in this season, you're going to reap if you don't faint. The enemy wants you to faint. He wants you to give up. He wants you to throw in the towel. He wants you to lie down and just say that it's over. But I hear God say that I come that you may have life and that more abundantly. So if I'm giving you life and it's an abundant life, he said, all you got to do is walk in it.
for coming to sit with us on this morning. God, we thank you because you're Emmanuel and you're God with us. God, we thank you for coming to be with us on this morning. God, we thank you for coming to dwell with us on this morning. Hallelujah. God, we thank you for your Holy Spirit. God, we thank you because you left the Holy Spirit to comfort. So God, we thank you because you came to dwell with us on this morning hallelujah jesus hallelujah hallelujah
Everything to me, you're everything to life. 
Bless his holy name. Whew. I do thank the praise team for ushering the spirit of the Lord. I said, God is already here. We came to just stand in his presence and to honor him for being who he is in my life at this time. Had it not been for the Lord, ooh, that was on my side, would not have made it. But I thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ooh, and I don't want to get too illuminated <laughs> because I start crying and I might not be able to say that I think that he has given me to say. So I want to just sort of keep it at bay until the time that I can do that. 
You may be seated if you would like, and thank you for your presence. Thank you. Oh, Sister Aisha, missionary Aisha is my adjutant sister this morning. So I am taking advantage of the level of elevation that I now have. But I don't stand before you this morning as supervisor of the headquarters jurisdiction. I stand before you as an humble servant because that's who I am. And as the praise team said, he's everything, everything to me. And I titled my message this morning, I would read the scripture. A charge to keep our hair and a God to glorify. My scripture reading is 1 Corinthians 4, 1 and 2. And before I uh, digress and read the scripture, I would like to thank the Lord for those who have tuned us in by the way of uh, social media. And most of all, I thank God for your gathering. You know, fifth Sundays are art Sundays. And folks find a whole lot of stuff to do. They want to say, I've been going to church four Sunday. This is my off day. Not that they're going to church, but they're going to do other stuff, things. But I thank you for presenting yourself here on this morning. Thank Pastor for opportunity, and I say it is, because this is his pulpit. He has allowed us to speak to the people that God has entrusted in his hand. If I wanted to, <laughs> I could not have given anybody else the charge because I asked for it. Ain't that something? I don't think I've ever done that since we've been in this building. How many years? <laughs> because I feel so mm, less than. And I feel I got all of these persons, missionaries, and every one of them have a credential to say a word. Now we got the bishop over there. We got more minister. And I said, just let them do all of that. I'll just be a faithful servant. So as pastor was come by my door, and this is where he knocks on the door with his fingers like this, tick, 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 tick. And uh, I said, yes. And he opened the door and said he was on his way out uh, of the building, out of the house for a minute. Uh, he said, I'll be back. And I said, okay. And I said, uh, Who's slated to speak to us on Sunday? He said, I don't know. I'm waiting uh, on the Lord to give me uh, a person. And from my bed, I said, I'll do it. He said, you will? <laughs> he was surprised. I said, yes. My spirit is leading me to do it. And uh, as the old man said, the spirit don't fail me now because I volunteered. <laughs> and y'all know that I have spoken in the headquarters to other people. But at home, I'd like to give the home team that opportunity. But this message has been resonating in my spirit as I look back over my little tablet where I do writing since uh, August of 2023. So I think it's time to say it. So our scripture is let a man, 1 Corinthians 4, 1 and 2. Let a man so account of us, and that is what men has said, King James Version, as of the minister of Christ and stood, stood of the ministries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man or a woman 
be found faithful. And that ends the reading of the scripture. You may be seated. Now, I'm sorry, got some more. Isaiah 4, 40, 27, and 31. What says thou, O Jacob, or speaketh, O Israel, my way is hid from the Lord, and my judgment is passed from over from God. Has thou not known, has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. And that does in the reading of my scripture. Because it says there is no searching to his understanding. This morning I am afforded, as I said, to stand with you. And as I told Pastor, I said, well, definitely won't be long because uh, I'm depending on how long and how well I stand in these shoes and my feet. But should my feet start to bothering me and I kick the shoes off, don't nobody try to get them because, you know, and I'll just stand <laughs> bare feet. And that is not something that I do because I don't, I can't go bare feet from a child because I just don't like the feel of whatever under my feet. Tried it. You know, back in the country, children went to bare feet in the summer because the parents don't want to wear them shoes out. So, they, you know, put them out there and they run through the mud and the grass and all of that. And every time that we were put outside to play barefoot, mama would look around and I have found something, cloth, tires to make me some type of shoes. Wrap my feet. I guess you thought something was going on with my feet. And after a while, she said, Decime, and that's my name, Decime Edwards Lee. She said, I'm not going to make you go out bare feet anymore. So what kind of shoes? Because I don't even remember my mom buying me no sandals. Probably found some slides or something in the house. She said, you won't have to do that. So as I get ready to say this word for the Lord, should my feet feel uncomfortable because you know that I have not been able to even walk mm, on my own feet without support. But this morning I'm standing with my shoes on. What is a steward? One that has overseer a charge of goods of someone else. We come into this world owning nothing but with a purpose or a mandate from our creator to care for his possessions as per our ability, which is God given with the Holy Spirit as helper. So I don't feel insecure this morning because I got my helper, love on one side and grace on the other. That's going to help me on this morning. So I ask you this morning, what are you charged with? Because each of you that have accepted the Lord as your personal Savior and been baptized with the Holy Spirit, he has given you a gift. It came with the baptism, and he expects you to be an overseer, a good partaker, protection for that. For years, I didn't even know uh, what my spiritual gift was until, and I get to that, until the Lord had to reveal to me all I know that I had a gift of seeing, not seeing things like folks see angels and all of that. <laughs> Had one sister, that's all, she didn't even want to pick cotton. That she's out there look, gazing up in the stuff while she watching the elements. <laughs> Dad said, girl, you will stop to start gazing and get to work. 
So I didn't see things like that. But I observed people. Still do. And what he had to teach me, because you see what you see, he has to give you the option with to speak. Because if I saw something, I was just about going to say something. Because I thought that, you know, <laughs> you got no time for no waiting. He said, come here, baby. You slip too long. You got on a white dress, why you got on a red slip under it? That's not etiquette. You know, I thought I was supposed to say that. And the Lord had to tamper my mouth and claim my tongue. That you're not supposed to say everything come up. My mom say everything come up shouldn't come out. But you know what? That was a blessing that the Lord used me. Because I don't know many of you that know missionary evangelist Patricia Riley. Gone on to be with the Lord. She said, I said that to her about the red slip under the white dress. Because it it, it just, just don't go together. And she said that she heard me. And from that Sunday on, she said, Lord, that would never happen again. So you don't know who you're helping when you say what you say, but you just know how to say it and when to say it. So because I had a gift of discernment, I am a people-watching person. I can sit in a car, drive, and doing it now, but got that earlier, and just watch people go by. And each one that passes by, something in my spirit is talking to me. Wonder what happened to them. Because everybody you see have not had it like you've had it. And you can look at them and tell life has not been good. And I ask myself, Lord, wonder what happened to them. And I began to pray for them. That's what my spirit would tell me to do. So this morning, my message is an interrogation <laughs> of myself. As to ask the questions, who am I? How do people experience me? <sighs> do I have good or bad vibes? Don't everybody hold a hand and speak at once. When I walk into a place or a group of people, immediately I can tell how they engage me. And some of you do too. Because if your spirit don't mix with theirs, they're going to shut down. Walk into a thing and somebody up just illuminating, talking and blah, blah, blah. Not saying they're not telling the truth, but they know you know the whole truth. And they'll just wither down. I like in a hotel ambiance. Oh, I like the chandelier and all of that. And when I walk in, I say, oh, yeah, the carpet. This is where I want to spend my time. And don't mind spending my money because I like what I see. Everybody don't like what they see in you because they don't like the God in you. And because God has not elevated them to be who you are, then they got a problem with you. Pastor and I have conversation often because those of you know I've been with them since covid I have not been allowed to go back home, 4490 Cimarron, and that is my dress. <laughs> Went over the other day, and the air condition is not doing what it's supposed to do. But he and I be on one accord. After we get our coffee, and again, standing around the island, he talking and I'm talking. And I would say, uh, Pastor, we got to go to the table and sit down because my feet are tired. And we talk. He is my counselor. Uh, one day, I, <laughs> if I get enough money, I don't know when that would be, to pay 
him for his services. Because you know, he got all them credentials that cost you, cost him. That when you invite him to come and sit before you, you're supposed to have your money right. Woo, I don't have to do that. I said, come on, Pastor, let's, let's talk. And begin to just talk about life, stuff, me. And he has the opportunity. He also has the intuitiveness to say, Mama, what's bothering you today? <laughs> or what does that do? That opens up for me to, like, that Jesus... Have a little talk with Jesus and tell him all about your trouble. And we just talk backwards and forward and backwards and forward until after a while we look up. Guess what? It's lunchtime. And, and he has been my chef since last October because I said I could not take care of myself with the COVID. He said, Mama, what you want to eat today? Whatever you cook. And lady, first lady said, mm, you done messed him up because he think he can cook now. I said, he can because he can cook for me. Whatever you're going to cook is what I'm going to eat today. And I have done that all of the time. So as supervisor on this morning, I take the privilege doing the cap and ceremony for evangelist missionaries. That is one of my jobs. And I have to ask them or give them the charge that is written, and it's a standardized one, and they have to answer with the Lord being my helper. Because they must depend on him, the Lord, to navigate them through this new call that they have accepted. Because they don't know what they're going. They know they heard the Lord. All of that went into uh, the, the course of which they have completed. But they don't know what they're laying, they're entering into. And they're not prepared yet to really go out. But they've accepted the charge. Charges come in stages. Ask me. I would not have been effective in my new position at age 25, my new position, supervisor of headquarters jurisdiction, at age 25, because I was 81 when I accepted it. I would have been an accident waiting to happen. Because you see certain gifts in a young person and you place them in a weighty position, they can't handle it. So our responsibility is to work with them where they are and coach them to maturity. Too much, too fast causes disasters. Speeding causes wrecks. My charge today, my first charge was singing. Don't know when I learned it. Sang at age of five. The Lord would make a way somehow. Now you all know and I know a five-year-old don't know nothing about what a Lord will make a way somehow. I knew all of the words. I knew the tune. And possibly had a piano over there, not playing, but plunking. Don't know what key I was in, but I do know I could sing. My dad sat on the end of the front row because he was the deacon when the pastor wasn't there, he served as the pastor. Never given a message, but he carried the church until the pastor came. We had service every second and fourth Sunday in the country. Y'all don't know about that. We had to go. On first Sundays, 
We went across the street to the Baptist church and had church with them. On the third Sunday, we went the next step up, which was the Whitney on Sunday night, Church of God in Christ. And we had church with them. So we were not lacking in church at all. But you know, I don't know what uh, got in me and what was going on. Wasn't no sunshine band day, none of that. And they called Desi Edwards to sing. And I got up with my little self and went by my daddy sitting on the end of the seat with his leg crossed because that's just, that's just something that dad did. And if you notice, we have with this, the family, we have that. He pitted me do that. And I went by and he said, Gal? <laughs> Back then, old folk called you Gal. And it wasn't nothing down. He said, Gal, can you sing? I said, I don't know, but I'm going to try. So I got up and I was singing the song, The Lord Will Make a Way Somehow. That was my interest into the singing ministry that I knew I could sing. And the church at that time would say, clapping, oh, that this Edwards can sing. I then uh, began to go sing every Sunday. I digress a bit, as I said, because I didn't, five-year-old don't know, what that means had I not experienced. But you asked me now at 85, 86, oh, I can tell you about what the Lord will do. Back in the day, the church would not sanction a young saint missionary to be licensed if she had a lap baby. <laughs> I remember that. Due to the fact her charge was the care of her infant child and husband if she had one. But back in the day, it was the husband, the wife, and then the child. Some kind of way, we got the cot before the horse and it's still giving us problems today. Her first charge would it take care of that baby and if she was exhibiting gifts, she might have prophesied, preach, lay hands, do all of that. You might take her through the course, but the old mother would not prefer on her the paper licenses that they do now because what they say it, this is a lofty position. You are not ready for it. And then... When you get your license, as those of us up there, you can now be except outside engagements. Anybody wants you to come and speak for them, then you have that permission. So no papers, no going. Again, I say, there was a time when you went to speak for people. They wanted to see not only the women, but they wanted to see the men license. So show us your license. They want to know where you come from. Who ordained you? And do you have the privilege to come? Because everybody is not somebody that you can put over your people. So that was one of the reasons why we did not. They did not do it. And in our church today, <laughs> I had, that was just before, uh, I was accepted the call, or the, not the call, because the position as supervisor. Sister Sarah, Sister Tab, and some more were licensed that year. I, Sister Sarah, <laughs> and Brother Trevor, 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 had gotten married. And guess what? She got pregnant. And it was voice that, oh, she can't stay in the class. And, oh, she can't do this. And you all know Oliver Williams. 
He said, they ain't got to worry about nothing because I'll pick that up. So they never had him an opportunity to come before that board because he said, number one, she's in order. She got a husband. And if they want to have a baby, that's their choice. And you all cannot put her out of the class. She will graduate. And guess what? She did. (laughs) Sister Sarah is the only one that I ever know couldn't wear a habit because she was so close to a deliverance. They said, girl, go get you a black dress. And you, guess what? Sarah came down the line. March, first thing in line, with her pretty flowing, it was gorgeous, black dress on. But I imagine, had she not been a married lady, it would have gone another way. I received the baptism in water before I received it in the Holy Ghost. Because I'm sure I'm about this tall, and at that time we baptized it. In Quiver River, it has dried up now. Because I, you know, going back to the country, and once you would go down where you come from, and I said, I want to go by Quiver River because I want to see how it look. Riding down there, it was not a river anymore. It was a creek. Water, you can't hardly, you could take a bath in Went down there because at that time, that water was high. My dad and the pastor would baptize us, and we also baptized with the church across the road. And I was so short until my dad had to hold me up. And I was just saying, huh, 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 breathing. Daddy said, shut up, gal. I ain't going to let you drown. But I received a the Holy Ghost after that. I sing in the school choir. I was the youngest member of the choir to go to school competition. The principal, in preparation for the competition, the principal would come and sit and evaluate us. Can you imagine me, a soprano, Standing on the front row (laughs) with my black and white saddle oxfords, bobby socks, and not yet wearing stockings. He said, Edwards, you tell your mama to go buy you some little shoes and some stockings. Because we can't have you standing on the front row looking like that. The same principle that had nagged the children in the church of God in Christ, he had a habit of coming to our revivals, but not enough, I call it intelligent, to come in the building. He out there with the raising the window, peeping in, Seeing what we doing. And guess what we were doing as children? We were shouting, praising God, receiving the Holy Ghost. Next day you come back to school, he going to point you out. I saw y'all out there cutting up. And I told him, I said, his name was James Hunter. I said, Mr. Hunter, he said, I was peeping in the window. I said, Mr. Hunter, why wouldn't you come inside if you came to the church? I didn't want to come inside. And that's what he did time after time. So he would put you up. He would single you out, trying to embarrass you. But that same principle that nagged the children in Church of God in Christ At graduation, eighth grade, I was almost as tall as I am now, brought me from the back of the line to the front of the line in order to lead the eighth grade graduation. 
And I said, look at God, bringing you from the back to the front. Now, they had tried a lot of folk of other persuasion to walk and lead that line. They couldn't do it. And after a while, he got tired. He said, bring Desi Edwards to the front of that line. Said she can lead the line because she's sanctified. And she know how to walk. (laughs) So shortly after that, I did receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And all I said was, Lord, I got to be saved. Because I saw nothing in front of me that made me not want to accept the Lord. He granted my wish. I began to seek him for the Holy Ghost, and he gave me the Holy Ghost. Dad moved our family to Marigold, Mississippi, which was in a different district, and we changed schools, which was a blessing because this school offered typing and shorthand, which the other school did not offer. Watching my business teacher, her name was Exe Ola Griggs, typing. That ignited something in me, the desire to go to business college, which I pursued. It was Dad's desire that I stay home. I graduated in 1956. Some of you in here were not born. A lot of you weren't born. It was my dad's desire to pay my way through schooling. However, my sister above me was in cosmetology school in Memphis. He couldn't afford the two of us at the same time and advised me to wait another year. And he would be in position. And my reply was, Daddy, just get me to Memphis. With my little school, they gave me $100. That was my scholarship. I said, and I'll pay my way through. The first quarter, I enrolled. And after three months, I had a job. Never had to look for one. One was always waiting on me. I changed my classes from day to night. Recommended to a boss that I had never seen. He accepted me on sight. My sister was getting married same time. One that I couldn't go to school because dad was paying for her education. When a spot opened at John Gaston Hospital, I applied for the job in the pharmacy department, and I received that job, and I began working for the pharmacy. Some of you heard of Champions, whatever that place down there on Third Street, where everybody would even get our blessed oil and so lot of things. He came the year that I started to that pharmacy. That's where I met him. And that would last up until he retired. He died not long ago. But watching her type with a flair she demonstrated made me want to follow that path. School back then had what we call teachers' imitation programs. Y'all ever had those? Look at y'all. Y'all even know about those, do you? Lesson. And uh, the, the congregation, the children would all gather in the auditorium and we would perform for them. So I chose to imitate her because I could see myself in her as an adult. Didn't know at the time God was molding my personality the one that I now have. I started as a teenager. (laughs) Don't try to change me now. (laughs) Too old. Again, I say your path and purpose is God orchestrated. 
the saying, accept what God allows, you're better off anyhow. It'll bring you to it, and God will see you through it. We have our own agendas, and we want to do what we want to do when we want to do it. But I said, if God say no, it's no. I don't care how you try to navigate around it. He would always bring you back to the purpose and the plan he had for you. My second charge was marriage. After graduation in 1958 from the business college, no white, <laughs> they said, Whoo, no white establishment. Remember now, this is Jim Crow time. Talking about Juneteenth, they were talking about last Sunday. Mm -hmm. No white establishment would hire black girls in their office. That's why I went to school. Not going back to the cotton field and none of that. Not working in Miss Ann's kitchen. Mm -mm. I moved on from that. So I had to accept work in a convenience store across the street, just across from my apart apartment. After my so-called boyfriend married, and he did, last time I talked to him, the way he did alive, but we were the same age. And last time I talked to him, he was still crying. Said he missed the best thing. I said, but God knows the best. After that, y'all can make us his Mother Pearl, this is part of my epistle. I lost interest in dating after he married. Didn't want no boyfriend. And my mom said, every time this May, every time I come to town, you got a new boyfriend. And I said, yeah, mommy, none of them lasted. So I had decided to volunteer for military because now I knew how to type and oh, my shorthand was on point. I could do that. And I said, I know that I can get a job in the military, but my mother bitterly objected. Couldn't understand why. The mama said, don't nothing go to, go to the, she said, go to the wall, but bad, what's a bad girl? Those girls are over there with them, <laughs> with them cut to fit things on. And at that time, I probably weighed about 118 pounds and not a pound over. But one day with that desire, a young man, <laughs> listen, Dressed in a soldier uniform, cut to fit, pretty brown eyes, walked in and asked me to fix him a sandwich. And I told him a couple times, fishing, we don't sell sandwiches. You know, can you sell meat and the bread? You fix your own sandwich. But he prevailed. He said, please fix me a sandwich. I am so hungry. Not knowing that he was going to school right across the way from where I was working. So after a couple of times, I fixed him a sandwich. We ate that one up real fast, fixed him another one. So I began to interrogate him concerning military life. And he said, oh, you don't want to do that. And I said, oh, yes, I do. Tell me what go on and this, that, and the other. He informed me that he had been in military for eight years. He was re-enlisting re to make a career. And he would marry me and take me back with him. Ain't that a proposal or is it? 
Now, my apartment being right across the street from where I was working, and my mama visited us often. So mom was in town. And I said, you got to ask my mama. So he went on, met mama, and mama said, well, I guess that she can get married. He promised to take me traveling all over Europe and here and there. Guess what? I'm still waiting. <laughs> After marriage, which we married July 28th, 1959. After marriage, he decides to tap the re-enlistment papers. And we can't go where I thought I was going. Was that ground for divorce? <laughs> Too late for an annulment because we've been there, done that. But still waiting on my trips. So as I said, we married July 20, 1959. I kept on singing. I joined Pentecostal Temple, the institution church. First Sunday in October, 1959. And served there until 1974. Singing in the choir. Because singing was my life. My third charge was being a mother. Divinely connected. I made a statement. Don't know whether it went in the atmosphere or old folks sitting around listening that I didn't want to have children. Now, I'm one of 13, so I think that's enough cheering to last. Because children alter your agenda according to my agenda. I had too many things to do, too many places to go, and I had a certain dress code. Dress up with the hat, lizard bag, shoes to match, <laughs> not a diaper bag, silk suits. You know, they're looking good. Y'all yeah, know about Pentecost Temple, that's where we come from. I had just been hired by the government of the job that I had desired for years. Motherhood was not on my agenda, not right now. Marriage was good. God's plan, he used two praying missionaries. Not minding their business, but minding mine. Missionary Catherine Taylor, some of you might know her, and Missionary Evelyn Petty, to intercede on my behalf, of which I didn't have sense enough, consulting the Lord for me. And shortly after they did that, guess what? I conceived. After two and a half months, my body aborted the fetus because I didn't know what kind of shape my body was in. Had terrible fibroid tumors, as the doctor said, most women get them. And because of that, I could not hold the fetus. I had gone to the doctor and he had said that I definitely was pregnant. The doctor said, after my exam, you will never be able to conceive or hold a child if you do conceive. Yet, shortly after them, I conceived again and through the divine spirit carried the baby to full time while still working. And the doctor would ask me, Aren't you having problems? Because that was a lot of me on the computer floor. I said, nope, doing fine. Go to another appointment. You're not experiencing any difficulty? And I said, nope, doing fine. 
And I remember telling the doctor, you know how they examine you and pry and pry and do all that kind of stuff. I said, don't you bother nothing. The Lord and I are going to carry this baby. I gave birth to my first child at age 31, 1969. I named her Alicia Michelle Lee. Late, some would say, after being married nine years, they would come by and look at me. <clears throat> you ain't pregnant yet? And my thing said, do I look like it? Just because you got five or six don't mean that I want any of that. So that after a while, they would talk, stop talking to me about the baby situation. Still singing in the choir. Bishop, Mason, Bishop Patterson encouraged me to keep singing. Because I said, well, you're pregnant now, this, that. I would take my seat. He said, Mother, you don't have to get out of the choir. Again, he said, you're a married woman. You stay in the choir. And I kept on singing. I continued to work through this. Five years later, I asked God for another child. Because the one that I had was setting uh, an attitude of selfishness. You know, everything is mine and Nobody in the world is all around me and blah, blah, blah. And I said, Lord, if I can have one more to go with this one, <laughs> I would appreciate it. He granted my wish. I conceived again on February the 6th, 1975. I delivered my second baby girl. And I think you all know her. We named her Shanta Louise Lee. We call her now First Lady. Ain't that something? Something that I didn't ask for? My assignment was that I didn't know at the time was to lead my husband to salvation. Because I knew he wasn't saved. Like pastors say, y'all bring him to him and want him to justify and because he said he's not the one, you fall out and you leave church. I knew he wasn't saved. I wasn't trying to get a saved man. I was trying to get a man to get me out of town. <laughs> Take me to the world. That's all I want him to do, sister. Turn me a loose and I'll take care of myself. Now, that, that, that's all I was looking for. But guess what? God knowing what's in my heart. Prayers of my mother. Hallelujah. I depended on him for nothing. But he depended on me for prayer. I see Sister Vanessa. You remember Deacon Lee. She come from Holy Trinity. He would go out, do whatever he had to do. Didn't worry about me sleeping or whatever it was. And, but when he came home, his request was, pray for me. Now, and to me, you're not even trying to be saved from your action. Pray for me. And I would always pray for him. First of all, I pray that when he go out, don't nobody kill him. Because I had this vision in my mind that somebody was going to kill him because he, you know, had all of this gusto, all of this wall stuff in him that he had not digested, and he wasn't backing down off for nothing. So if you were approached, he wasn't going to bother you. But if you bothered him, you had trouble on your hand. And I just knew that that was his nature. So I but ask God to just spare his life and let him get back home one more time. Not being willing to conform to being a mom. I tried it one Sunday 
with the little cute bag, a diaper bag, baby bottles, silk suit on. <laughs> Look at my purse shaking her head. My pearl, I, I would dress for church like my used to be. And when I could not do that any longer, took the little baby to church and held her up to burp her. And guess what happened? <laughs> Mothers, y'all know what happened. She spit a spat, spit a spat, regurgitated. All down my silk suit back. It was so bad that the cleaners could not clean it. And this was the silk suit I had bought from downtown at the terrace shop. And guess what else went on? The Lorraine Hotel, that's now the Civil Rights Museum, it was owned at that time by the Bailey family. It was the Lorraine Hotel. And Miss Bailey had put the suit in the layaway, but refused to collect it. And as I walked into, <laughs> this is really funny, the shop, the lady immediately came to me and said, uh, I got a suit I think you would be interested in. And she took me over to that place and showed me the suit. And I said, oh, gave me the history of it. It's Mrs. Bailey. I didn't know who Mrs. Bailey was at the time. And she had this in the layaway and blah, blah, blah. I said, oh, yes, I want that suit. And I bought it. Before God could give me additional responsibility, he had to test how faithful I was over the gift of motherhood. Motherhood. I was working for the government. I went there to do 20 years and retire. But after 10 years, I was forced. <laughs> Y'all hear me? Forced. Because I didn't want to leave my job into retirement because I got so sick. I could not work. I was too independent for myself. Because I told him, you can leave and never come back. It'll be fine with me. That was not the will of the Lord. But it was my desire that he do that. <laughs> never come back. <laughs> How are you going to lead somebody to the Lord? And you tried to run them off. One time, and this is not in my notes, this is epistle. Uh, I couldn't sleep because, you know, what about you, blah, blah, blah. I got up and I wrote him a letter. How many pages? I don't remember. And I expressed my desire. Told him how I felt. I said, but you are now beginning to affect my sleep. And I'm one that loved to sleep. And my appetite. You got to go. <laughs> and after I got through saying myself, and y'all know what time? It was 4 o'clock in the morning. I, I dated it. I folded. It was on blue stationery. Never forget. I folded nicely. And the next time that I fixed his meal, Sister Nelson, I put the letter by his plate. So that he could read it. Because I had told him everything I wanted him to know. It's time for you to pack up and leave. Fixed his breakfast, he ate. Dinner time, he ate. Next day, letter still on the table. So by now, you all know I'm tired. I said, did you see the letter that I had written? Did you read it? He said, no, I did not read it because ain't nothing good in that letter. I said, it's about as good as what you were doing. I said, I've given you permission 
to go and never come back. Y'all know what he told me? Shell, I hope you listen. He said, give me three weeks. Give me three weeks. And I told him, okay. In three week time, God had made a turnaround. Eh. He accepted the Lord. And he found his ministry as deacon in the Holy Trinity Church of God in Christ. And you know somebody that was faithful to the call? If pastor didn't show up, he was there. Thank you, Lord. Last time he was sick, and I had to go to the hospital for his discharge and pick him up. On my way home, he said, take me to Kroger. I want chicken wings and rice. He said, after that, I want, to take, I want you to take me to my church. I did that. He was one that kept the church painted, kept the church clean, and to my knowledge, never received a, 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 a dime. No, he said, I want to keep this church. If the pastor needed anything, he was there. Kept them bills folded up. He had a paper, a money clip. I probably got that at home in my drawer now because I kept the stuff. You know that money clip? He would clip that money and slide it down in his pocket. And one time, he had so many $100 bills in his pocket because I would investigate. <laughs> I said, this man don't need to spend a hundred dollars in his pocket. I just fold him over and took what I wanted. And guess what? He never asked about it. Therefore, he never knew what he had in the first place. And from then on, so many things that when one Sunday he gave me grocery money, fifty dollars every two weeks, because that's what grocery was cheap. And it was just from us, you know, four of us. He came home and he said, Desi, he said, ain't got no grocery money. He said, pastor needed the money for the church. He said, I gave it to him. I said, don't worry about that. The Lord is going to bless us. And a little silly woman, I said, she's silly because her husband wasn't saved either. And she told me, you think you something because your little husband saved. I said, I'm praying that the Lord will save yours. <laughs> Again, my tongue wasn't tempered then. <laughs> she said, you're going to let your husband give all of that money in the church? Whew. I said, let me tell you one thing. When he wasn't saved, and he was going out there making it rain. Y'all know what I mean. Clubbing was his thing. When he left, I didn't know when I was going to see him, but he was making it rain with the dollars. I said, and do you think that I would say anything to him now that he is saved and giving money to the church? And I said, I'll never say nothing to him. And if you was wise, you wouldn't say nothing to yours. Because, you know, folks tell you how to spend your money. And I had to get that off my chest because that was a little bothersome. Because, you know, folks, you, you know, you're going to let your up with you. But what am I telling him? Don't do it. God had been providing when he was doing other stuff. Mm -hmm. So now... I had a testimony, and I thank God for that. God satisfied us with what he has for us. Some owning businesses, 
And we are still not happy. Some of us have cars, the kind of cars we want to drive. We're still not happy. We were satisfied with much less. We yearn for the latest luxury car with the wheels doing this. <laughs> and y'all know how I like, I like stuff, but I'm not, I don't like cars like that. Don't you want us to ride on your car at that time? I had my first Mercedes. Put on that. I said, the name is Mercedes Benz. It's already written. But I did want them pretty rims. Are they rims? They call rims. <laughs> Drove up to the thing, told the man what I wanted, had selected him. When he gave me the price, I said, that's all right. <laughs> I don't want them that bad. The one that came on here is going to be the one that I'm going to ride with. <laughs> Never had, lo I lost that desire. Just like when the baby came. I lost my taste for shopping, going places, because now she was my first level of care. As Christian, we must not discount the blessing that God has given us. We need to understand that God does not do blanket blessings. He blesses us individually. Mm according to our deeds, needs, and his purpose. Our relationship is our creator is personal. We don't want to get sidetracked and distracted by material possessions. Our eyes must remain on him. And he will focus and give direction for our lives. In 1987, another epistle at the age of 50, <laughs> I received my divine call. Didn't know it was that at the time, but I began to see things in the church. Again, it's discernment. Little young ladies flouncing, talking, chewing them, just doing ungodly stuff. That disturbed me because I can't get in surf for watching them. Whew. And I asked the Lord, where are the mothers these days? Because I remember Coming up, the old mother wouldn't let you chew gum, cross your leg, do none of that stuff. She would walk all the way from that side over to that to take that fan or something and slap you side the head and tell you to stop that. So I'm wondering, where are those mothers? <clears throat> and guess what? I heard a voice in my ears said, you are the mother now. What? Didn't ask for that, Lord. I got permission from the pastor to start and organize the Young Women Christian Council. We call it the YWCC, which curtails all of that. And he greatly honored my request. He said, Desi, I know the Lord's told you to take that because I've appointed two people years before. They'll do a little bit. And they would quit. He said, but if the Lord told you to do it, he said, you will take it and you won't lay it down. This was the beginning of my call into ministry. And as I know it now, from that obedience, my elevation in the church began. 1990, I'm coming to a close, been talking too long. I was drafted by Mother Freddie J. Bell to head the jurisdictional YWCC. And I was put under the tutelage of Mother Callie Smith. 
the national president. And we formed a bond that lasted for a lifetime. In 1993, after I was comfortable that Shanta was okay and situated at the Southern University in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, I was appointed approached by Superintendent Charles Tucker to, to be his district missionary for the Good Shepherd District, one that we still. I felt the unction, but I didn't want to be bothered with people on that level. Love people, but didn't particularly like them. Because people can be a problem. They're two-faced, talk or say this, that, or the other, pretend that they love you when they don't. I didn't have time for that. You stay over there, and I stay over here, and we won't have no collision. But I sought the Lord, and after I felt the weight, I agreed that I would accept the position. And I served in that position for 25 years. God gave me, and I remember walking in the door. I said, Lord, now if you want me to do this job, you must give me love for the people. Because you know I don't like them, but I love them. And the Lord gave me such a love for those people we had in our district <laughs> a little mission. And those were the dirtiest little children. And guess what? They just want to hug you and put your hand on your clothes. And I'm still trying to protect myself. <laughs> hey, baby. Bye, baby. Ooh, he sanctified me so until I didn't mind those little dirty children hugging me. Now, y'all know I got real saved by then, right? Real saved. And wherever they are now, I thank God for the motivation that he gave me. After I had decided to resign quietly, this was June of 18. I was approached by Bishop Hall. I know him. One that's running for general board again. <laughs> to undergird Mother Miller. And he said, uh, Mother Desi, I know you can do it. I had served with her for 20 years. I accepted that channel. Now, this is July. Guess what? October 16, Mother Miller said, she didn't want to do that no more. Trick. And offered to her letter of resignation. I came to Bishop's office October 6th. He did like this. Mother Miller's resignation. I wasn't tickled. Because you told me. I was going to be assistant jurisdictional supervisor. And I was the first, Sister Tizzy, to serve in that office after they had been in office for 101 years. Now, I ain't I special? But then she done messed around and turned in her resignation. And he said, now, <laughs> all in the same breath, like he happened. You won't go in as the assistant supervisor. You go in as the jurisdiction supervisor. My supervisor. Ah, whatever. Whatever. And that is how I got to the office where I am. And on our, November 9th, 2018, in the International Holy Convocation, in St. Louis, Missouri, in the presence of my family, 
my friends and well wishes. I was consecrated by Mother McCoo Lewis that you all know. I'm still serving. I came into this world owning nothing, but during my 86 years of life, God has allowed me to participate in ministry by singing, motherhood, <clears throat> teaching, and being a steward over whatever finances, y'all know money is my thing, that he has entrusted in me to care for his church. I always said, after I, you know, sort of stabilized myself, I got two dependents, my children and my church. Up until now, God has been good to me. I've seen too many victories to let the stealer have the last word. And this is my song for this morning. If I can pitch it, get it about on that side, pick it up. What I have may not be much. In the eyes of someone else, it might not measure for human frailty. And though it can compare to what you've given me, may not be much, but I give it back to thee. No riches in my from the east, no gold from the west. On a scale, it may not measure with the best. And though it can't compare to the gift that we share, may not be much, but I give it. To thee, I give you my friends, so I walk in your ways. I give you my mind, so you teach me what to say. I give you my heart, so you fill it with your love. To you I give my soul Well, I give you all that I have Some it may not be much But that it is But that it is But that it is But Hallelujah. 